Hi. When Warhammer 40,000 was first released way back in the 1980s, the only vehicle kits that were available from Games Workshop were those that could be made of metal. This limited you to the Orc Attack Buggy, the Space Marine Land Speeder, and Dreadnoughts for Marine, Orc, and Eldar factions. However, in the intervening years, it's, the range has come on a lot, and now Games Workshop produces a full range of plastic vehicle kits, and many of these have analogues in the real-world militaries of the 21st century. For example, we have main battle tanks in the form of the Lehman Rus or the Predator, armoured personnel carriers like the Rhino, and infantry fighting vehicles like the trusty Imperial Guard Chimera. However, if you look at a lot of armoured vehicles today, you will see that they are frequently fitted with some form of additional protection in uh, beyond just having a thickly armoured hull. And in this video, I am going to look at how you can model some of these uh, additional armour protection types on your Imperial Guard and Space Marine vehicles. The first of the extra armour types I want to look at is some external spaced armour and that is quite simply uh, an extra layer of armour plating added to the side which is spaced away from the main hull slightly. So in addition to having the benefit of an extra layer of solid armour plate you've actually got it uh, with a gap between it, the armour plate and the hull and incoming shaped charge weapons would detonate early and they would have a much less chance of actually penetrating the hull of the vehicle. Now these are quite simply made from plastic card uh, on both these types. You'll notice that this is a much lower hauled vehicle than a standard Lehman Russ. It's because my, for my squats I made the Lehman Russes shorter and fatter by using Chimera track sections instead of the regular Lehman Russ ones. Obviously, if you've got a standard Lehman Russ, you could still make uh, spaced external armour. You'd just have it a bit taller. It gets a little more complicated if you've added the sponsons onto the side of the tank, but that can still be worked around because you just make the armour in a sort of L shape, largely behind and then coming under where the sponson would sit. Uh, but for all types of Imperial Guard vehicle, really, they are quite simple to add. It's a bit trickier, though, with some Space Marine vehicles, uh, and I'm going to show you the process of adding the armour plate to those because of that extra difficulty. I'm going to start by looking at this Rhino, and you'll be able to see the main issue with adding side armour panels immediately, because we've got this large door here, uh, and unless you actually want to block off the entry ports on the side of the vehicle, then you're going to have to leave these clear. And that means instead of a single armour plate running all the way along from front to back, I will instead have two plates, one at the front and one at the back. Uh, you can see I've already put on some pieces of plastic card to mount the actual plates. I've used 2mm thick plastic card for these. And because the exhausts stick out by 4mm, I've only needed 2x2 two two thicknesses on the exhausts, whereas for the hull, it's 2mm thick and then 6mm deep. And the actual panels themselves have here. Uh, these are made from one millimeter thick plastic card as a base and then to make them look a, a little more interesting I've put some smaller panels on which are again one millimeter thick and I've taken this Dark Angels detail from the Ravenwing accessory sprue and then these would quite simply be mounted at the front and the back like so leaving the door clear in the middle and obviously I have another set ready for the other side. I'm not going to stick these on just yet though uh, because the way that they cover the side of the vehicle and they are relatively close it's a lot easier to paint the vehicle before you stick them on. When it comes to Land Raider type vehicles, uh, we have not only a side entry port that needs to be kept clear, 
but we also have the sponson mounted las cannons so as with the rhino i will be using two separate armored panels at the front and the back and you can see that I've already mounted the spaces are on the side of this vehicle. Now, unlike with the Rhino, I've been able to mount all of these at the same level. The side of the Land Raider is a lot flatter. So each of these has got a width of six millimeters. And the armor plates themselves, again, I have made these from one millimeter thick plastic card detailed slightly with an extra panel of one millimeter thick and detailed further with parts taken from the raven wing accessory sprue these can then be glued at the front and the back of the vehicle like so uh, but again i won't actually be sticking them on until after it's been painted and with the Rhino and Land Raider now fully painted, I have glued the side armor panels onto the mounting strips of plastic card. Uh, and for the Rhino panels, these would work just as well on a Razorback uh, or a Predator. Though for a Predator, you might want to watch how far out you space the forward panels to make sure they don't obstruct uh, the sponsons on the doors if you're using them. Uh, they'd also work on a whirlwind uh, and also a vindicator though you might want to uh, uh, modify the vindicator slightly if you are mounting the panels onto the exhaust uh, pipes like i've done there is a school detail in the way that you might want to remove if you're going to use panels like this uh, for the hu the hunter uh, and such anti-aircraft vehicles which are also based on the rhino hull it's perhaps a little more complicated adding side armor panels because of course you've got the the stabilizing legs that stick out so this might not be a suitable uh, form of extra protection for those vehicles you needn't limit extra armor protection to your ordinary sized tanks and infantry fighting vehicles either here i have added uh, some extra spaced external armor to a storm lord super heavy tank and the only real difference is that instead of using one millimeter thick plastic card for the basic plate I've used two millimeter thick plastic card instead because I think one millimeter thick on a vehicle of this size would just look far too flimsy and lightweight. It has to look serious. Um, of course, this version is built without the sponsons, so I don't need to worry about having to leave anything clear for a sponson to stick out. If I were going to combine this extra armor with a sponson on a super heavy, I would probably put the sponson in the position right at the front here. And as with a Lehman Russ, I would use a sort of L-shaped plate at the side instead. The second type of armor that I'm modeling is reactive armor. Uh, and nowadays that consists typically of explosive reactive armor, which is a slab of shaped charge explosive placed on the outside of an armored vehicle hull so that when uh, an attack comes in, most likely from another shaped charge anti-tank missile, but also sometimes kinetic energy weapons, the panels explode with a uh, blast focused out and it deflects the incoming attack. Now I have made the panels for my vehicles from these and these are self-adhesive PCB feet. Uh, you just peel these off normally and stick them under a printed circuit board so that you can rest it on a desk without it slipping around. Uh, these are about half an inch across and about three millimeters deep. Um, the depth is probably okay uh, but the size is larger than I would have liked certainly bigger than the panels you'll see on modern day tanks but I think they still look the part I couldn't find anything smaller if I wanted to go smaller than this I think I'd have to shape them out of plastic card and then it become a lot more complicated Anyway, as you can see from these, I can apply those to both uh, Lehman Russ and Chimera hauled vehicles. I've got a command salamander here, uh, and I have fitted them to track guards to the side of the hull, 
and also underneath the front of the command salamander and on the Lehman Russ I have fitted them to the track guards the tops of the sponsons the side of the turret note that this is the older style Lehman Russ and on the newer one uh, the turret is not large it does, well, it does not have a large enough flat surface here for you to be able to stick these panels on uh, and then at the side I have got some more protecting the flat slab armor at the side. But again, it's not actually flat on the model here. So I've effectively used another spaced armored panel and I've stuck the uh, explosive reactive panels onto that. And if you're going to be using the newer kit, you would have to do that for the turret as well. The third type of armor that I'm going to look at today is this, and it is called caged armor, or I believe it's also sometimes called slatted armor. Uh, and this would work in the same way as the ordinary spaced armor, but instead of placing solid panels away from the hull, you instead have a cage arrangement made typically of metal bars or metal slats, then all held together in a rigid pattern. And the idea is that as attacks come in, they are triggered before they can reach the hull. Uh, but instead of the solid plates, you've only got these hollow cages. So it's lighter than the traditional spaced armor. Um, making these, though, is rather more complicated than simple blocks of plastic card. Uh, so I'm going to explain a bit more how I've gone about these. Uh, and you will see I have got plates for both the hull and the turret and they are all made from these plastic cotton buds. Uh, these aren't quite as easy to find as they used to be. A lot of places are now saying, oh, they're single use plastics, so we won't sell them anymore. So you may have to go to eBay. Um, but I, I prefer to use these over model making plastic tube because these are far, far cheaper. And to construct the armoured cages, I cut them to the lengths. This is a, another turret plate, uh, and each of these is a one half of a cotton bud. And I place them in small frames made of plastic card. Uh, they are spaced out using tiny squares of two millimetre thick plastic card, uh, and then held in place using some strips of half millimeter thick plastic card and I've put a, an arrangement like this at each end and then one in the middle to reinforce it. Uh, of course because this vehicle has sponsons on I've got a more L-shaped plate on the side hull and same on the other side and this one I'm not glued on yet so if I detach it you can see the mounting points that I've put on. Uh, pinning wire is very useful uh, for this sort of armor because you've not got a great surface area to deal with. Uh, so just glue on its own might not be enough. And typically this plastic is soft enough uh, that when you push down, you can in fact get the wire to push through uh, without drilling a hole so it'll sort of auto locate uh, although you may wish to drill some holes first just to make sure and I have a second vehicle and this one doesn't have the side sponsons so I've got a much larger cage and in fact it, it is longer than a cotton bud so I've had to extend it slightly and if I turn it round you can see the three mounting points that I've used for these side plates again uh, once again these are five millimeter plastic card sticking out and then with a length of pinning wire going through and you'll notice that I have picked points on the hull that are all at the same level uh, so that the the spacing can be the same throughout. 
I'm just going to quickly demonstrate how I extended some of the cotton wool buds to make the longer uh, plastic tubes needed for the full length side armour plating. And I've got here the two pieces of cotton wool bud that I want to join together end to end. I've got a full length one and a half length one. And I also have this small strip of plastic card, it is one millimetre wide, uh, one millimetre thick, and for this purpose I'm using 15 millimetres long, although the length isn't critical. What is important is that at one by one millimetres in cross section, I can get it to fit inside the cotton bud quite neatly. So I do that, so I've got it protruding about halfway in. I will add a dab of super glue around the edge. Now I'll pinch where the plastic card is going into the cotton bud. So I'm gripping it on the inside. And I'm not going to push it back in. And then I will simply slide the other length over. And hey presto, I've got a longer length. And I can do that as many times as I like to extend the length of the cotton wool bud into a much longer plastic tube. Uh, the only limitation is I would not want to use something like this to be bearing any form of weight because that's not that joint is not going to be as strong as the tubing itself. And now that I've fully painted these two vehicles, I have glued the caged armour panels in place to complete them. And so both of these tanks have the additional protection applied to both turrets and hulls. And even though these armour plates are just really large collections of holes, it really is easier to paint the tanks without the panels on uh, than it is with them on. Um, gluing a few of them onto this one first was not a good idea. So I, I would uh, strongly recommend painting the tank holes and uh, panels separately, even with this armour type. So there you have three different options for modelling some additional armour protection on Warhammer 40,000 tanks. Uh, and I am currently working on a document which provides written instructions and parts lists for all of these, uh, which I hope to have up on my website very soon. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you've enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Bye.